Hello everyone. Welcome to today's evening meditation in Journey Within Sahaja Yoga. So in today's meditation, we'll be learning about the importance of prayers. So let us begin today's meditation by taking a bandhan. I'm sure the people who are attending can go ahead and take a bandhan. And if you're attending for the first time, no worries. You can listen to the music playing in the background. Before we begin the meditation, I would just like to say that every day in our lives we go through so many things, so many problems, be it personally or work related or anything. And since childhood, we are just told by our parents and elders that, oh, just pray, pray and it will all be okay. And we, with our innocence as kids, with innocence, we used to just pray with our heart and hoping that whatever we have prayed happens. And that used to calm us down. In the midst of all the problems and everything when we grow up, we often lag, we often just miss that innocence sometimes. So as Srimataji, who is the founder of Sahaja Yoga, used to say that prayer is a very great thing. Sometimes all you need to do, the problems that you can't control, which are nowhere in your control, and we just overthink about it and hoping that yeah, something will happen if we just think, if we go through our plans, but some problems are just not under our control. All we have to do is just sit calmly, pray with our heart and complete devotion that whatever happens and will happen will be the best outcome for me or whatever situation I'm going through. So let us begin today's meditation. Let us all calmly sit down, place both our hands on our laps. And today we'll just pray, pray with our heart. So in Sahaja Yoga, I'm sure you must know that the motherly energy, which we call as Kundalini, 
who knows everything about us. Today we'll pray to that motherly energy who protects us and knows everything about us. So firstly, let us ask mother for strength. Let us pray with our heart. Mother, give me strength so that I be genuine. So that I won't deceive myself. Give me strength that I face myself. That I try to improve myself. Some days we just need that, that pinch of strength. Now, let us pray. Mother, give me a sweet tongue. A method by which I become communicative with others. Others respect me, they like me, and they like my presence. Give me the beauty of culture, beauty of understanding others. Mother, give me a sense of my own dignity so that I do not feel that I am belittled or someone has belittled me. Often we just keep thinking, be it about the past or the future and not sometimes just simple things. Oh, what am I going to do next? What will I be doing in the evening? Oh, I, this work was left. But sometimes you just want everything to be calm and quiet. So now let us pray. Mother, take away my thoughts. Mother, take away my thoughts. Give me a witness state by which I see the whole drama. Let me never spite others and criticize others. Mother, give me strength to have a very sweet tongue and a very sweet nature so that others like my company, they enjoy my company. Let me be like a flower and not like a thorn. Now, let us ask for humility. Mother, Please keep me away from ego. Give me natural humility.
let us keep our right hand on our heart and pray mother please fill my heart with love and joy take away all these thoughts and fill my heart with joy and love now we can bring our right hand back to our lap so shimata ji nirmala devi the founder of sahaj yoga she has quoted that prayer is a very big thing but we should always pray with our heart and sometimes all these problems that are there that we can't control overthinking and planning won't solve them all we have to do is meditate pray that whatever happens will happen for the best and then we witness the beauty of how everything works out even more beautiful of what we had planned so now let us listen to a talk by shimata ji so when we talk of communications first of all the greatest thing is the communication between human beings and when we have to think of the communication with the human beings many people think that by aggression you will communicate better which is not true i mean if somebody wants to get something out of someone say so you go there and just talk i have to have how can i do it is that as it is it's no but if you are sweet and start talking sweetly then 99% will definitely dissolve so to dissolve people with sweetness how to do it that trick one has to learn how with sweetness you can dissolve it this is one of his special qualities that you talk to someone in such a manner genuinely in a very sweet manner and the problem between you and that person will be dissolved absolutely now there are many tricks how to talk to someone is one of the biggest things one has to learn <clears throat> first of all you must always show that you are less intelligent than another person i like i'm talking to scientist i will say i'm sorry i don't know any science you know no good for scientist so they feel oh very good <laughs> if you have to talk to some musician you must say i don't know any music 
No, I just I've learned a little bit, but not much. The musician feels very happy. You may call it a pampering of the ego. You may call it, but there's no harm in saying that I'm nothing compared to you. So the first trick is complete humility when you talk to another person. It's a sign of greatness, it's a sign of fulfilment. As the trees, when they are laden with fruits, they bend down. So the first of all, if you say, I am no one, I don't understand anything, uh, but I would like to hear. This is first. First quality of communication is to be extremely humble about yourself. The another person should not know who you are. And there's a lot of fun in it. Say, for example, now, say, I can say about myself uh, that my husband was very highly placed in it. But I met a friend in Delhi, she was studying with me in school and in college. And uh, she asked me, where do you live? So I told her in Meenabak, which was just a useless, small little place meant for very ordinary officers, because we, they had not allotted us any house or anything. So temporarily we were there. She said, what? What is your husband doing? I said, being so, he's some government servant. I didn't tell her. He came down. So he just looked at me, smiled. He said, do you know him? I said, he's my husband. She was shocked. He's your husband? Oh my God! Why didn't you tell me? Immediately the whole thing changed. And she felt so ashamed of herself. She had started looking down upon me, that I was married to some clerk or someone or something. So the best thing is to play down. Play it out, everything. Now, I know of certain Sahaja Yogis, they say, Oh, Mother has given me such powers, I can do this, I can do that. This boastfulness is of no use. I haven't got any powers, you see. I just I am a Sahaja Yogi, that's all. But if you want, I can try. So, is to play it out. as much as you can. Practice this at home. First practice and then don't do it. So that is one of the greatest qualities of communication with others. Second thing, I think in the whole of Gita, if you read it, this one very important thing is, Krodhat Pijayati Samoha. See, among all the worst things that we have. According to him, we have six uh, enemies. But in Gita he started with Krodh. He said, starts with Krodh, with anger. If you have anger within you, then you are not a master at all. There's no need for a master to get angry, because he can play about. He can make you dance like this. What is the need to lose your temper? But that mastery, if you don't have, of handling people, then after five, six minutes of talk, your voice starts raising and a sort of a something starts barking. Because that temper is still inside you, burning. But for a master, there should be no temper. No need. He has started with Krodha, that with the Krodha all problems stopped, from one to another, to another, to another. So we should watch out if we are angry people. 
anger comes from vishuddhi starts from devar vishnu but expressed through vishuddhi face becomes red eyes become red from the mouth to see you start saying all kinds of horrible things and the whole expression becomes so different when you are angry so this anger is to be seen where is it within us where is it this anger liver or right i'll put it right so to master it you have to face yourself clearly many people have seen people say mother you know this lady is such a hot tempered woman she's so dominating she does this she does that but if you tell her so no no i don't do that way no no i'm very good but how others are saying that i don't know but i'm very good finished if somebody is saying that then you watch yourself do you get into tempers or not are you losing your temper it's very easy to make it up then face so the trick of the trade is to face yourself and see for yourself how much you are lacking so first is humility which is should be genuine and secondly is equanimity no temper there is no need to take to temper at the most you can say hey, what are you doing why are you doing that way now if you do something you know maybe something i might say which i do not like so i don't want to say like that at the most up to that point is all right that you should say that i dislike it but not to go further with it if you just stop at a point then this habit of getting into temper will go away. this arrogance will go which has to go this arrogance has to go this temper has to go and then you will be surprised you will feel very much relieved because this anger once it comes in reacts and catches your left shuddhi and you become guilty you feel very bad why i said so i should not have said so we should this finished left we should the means it's a headache it goes on accumulating like a storehouse there all your anger temper whatever you have and this left we should the catches and you know the problems of left we should so if you get angry with someone don't feel guilty but go before the mirror and slap yourself nicely twice 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 now you get angry with yourself let me get angry then stand before the mirror shoot 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 like that in the same manner as you get angry try to act so you never feel guilty or maybe more angry would be better so you empty out your left shoulder next time you won't do it but feeling guilty means you'll again repeat and repeat and repeat the same thing so this temper is expressed by men differently and women by different and i'm very much worried about the women sometimes because they take to water power then i'm lost but those who have ego too much cry much more that's the sign I've seen. If you say anything to them, immediately they start crying because already the left tissue is there full, like a full balloon, and you touch them, it becomes water. But men, their temper is different style, as you know very well. That when they get angry, they might fight with each other, box everyone. and then settle down nicely and have something to drink <laughs> let us have it out you see they'll say take out but women don't they keep it there and once they keep it then it becomes tears it starts coming down so these are just tears out of joy happiness that's different 
or out of feelings for others. But it's not that. But it's tears just to impress another person that you are very sad or something. Now, after that beautiful talk by Shri Mataji Nirmala Devi, let us just feel the calmness, feel the love and joy within ourselves. We can all listen to the music for some time. Let us finish today's meditation by raising our kundalini and taking a bandhan. Thank you everyone for joining today's meditation. I hope you all have a beautiful week ahead.